G'day, Troy Dean from WP Elevation, and welcome to episode 59 of the WP Elevation podcast. Our feature guest this week is Vid Luther from Pressable, formerly known as Zippy Kid. I've got to tell you, there was a there was a conversation right at the start of this interview that I was not prepared for, um, and I don't you know mean to make it about this, but it just blew me away. Vid told me that he and his brother were due to be in the World Trade Center on September 11. They were in the World Trade Center every day as part of their commute, and they overslept that morning and didn't make it. Uh, that completely floored me. He also said that the day before, on September 10, he had his first ever pilot's lesson to learn how to fly a Cessna, and the company subsequently gave him a refund, and he hasn't flown a plane since. So um, that and a whole bunch more about WordPress managed hosting solving problems, being an entrepreneur, almost burning out, uh, raising funding, trying to sell a, or uh, um, almost selling the company twice this year, but deciding to hang on to it. This is a fascinating interview. There's lots of grit in it. His honesty and candor is something that um, we probably haven't seen on this episode, on this uh, podcast before, and it certainly did throw me uh, on, on a few occasions. So um, worth checking out just to really get to know Vid Luther, the man behind Pressable. Uh, yes, there is a competition. He's giving away three months of the starter plan at promoter.io, which you'll learn more about uh, during the interview. And also, he's giving away, offering a free trial of Pressable to our listeners. All the details will be in the show notes at wpelevation.com slash vidluther, V-I-D-L-U-T-H-E-R. Stay with us. Let's elevate. This is the WP Elevation Podcast, helping WordPress consultants elevate. This episode of the WP Elevation Podcast is brought to you by Video User Manuals, the only, the original, the best way to teach your clients how to use WordPress. Our plugin puts over 70 video tutorials nowadays in, the, in your client's WordPress dashboard to teach them how to use WordPress to manage their content, how to use SEO by Yoast, to make sure their content is optimized, how to use WooCommerce if they have it installed, and a whole bunch of new videos courtesy of Justin Catroni, head of uh, analytics, well, sorry, analytics advocate at Google Analytics, which will show your clients how to set up and how to use Google Analytics. A whole bunch of videos that um, uh, Justin has allowed us to use in the plugin, which of course you can turn on or off depending on the client. You can add your own videos, you can put your own logo on the plugin, fully customize it, rebrand it, make it your own. Um, it's a dollar for your first month and then $24 a month after that uh, for all of your client sites. And you can now embed all of our videos in on your website, your membership website, where your customers can log in and learn how to use WordPress. So that's a great way to start a membership site. We've just given you a whole bunch of content that you can now use uh, as part of your license. And you can use those embed codes to display our videos in your membership site to attract people back to your uh, website. Check it out at videousermanuals.com or wpelevation.com slash V-U-M, V for video, U for user, M for manuals. And you'll see a video there of uh, my wife and I um, role-playing where I'm pretending to hand over a website to her and show her how to use the plugin. It's quite funny. Anyway, the elevation tip this week is just start, which is actually Vid's tip, his advice for anyone looking to start their own business, just start. Take imperfect action. You're better off executing a half-baked plan than not executing a perfect one. Uh, I know that sounds obvious. So if you've got an idea, just start. Vid Luther from Pressable is our guest this week. He's full of insight. He's full of honesty and raw candor. Uh, he doesn't pull any punches. He tells it as it is. He tells us the truth about having a startup and uh, how difficult it is and how he feels like he's just spent the first six months of this year being punched in the face and now he's starting to punch back. He's giving away three months of promoter.io, a fabulous tool which allows you to poll your audience and find out if they will recommend you, and if not, why. And if they will, then how you can incentivize them. And he's also uh, offering a free trial for Pressable. All the details will be at wpelevation.com slash vidluther, V-I-D-L-U-T-H-E-R. So without further ado, let's go and meet Vid Luther. G'day, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation, and I'm very pleased to have with me all the way from San Antonio, Vid Luther from Pressable. Hey, Vid, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for joining us on the show. 
Now, some of you, uh, some of you out there, might not know what Pressable is. Of course, it used to be Zippy Kid, and we're going to talk uh, more about that later on in interview. Um, but straight off the bat, here's an interesting competition this week. Vid and the guys at Pressable are giving away three months of Promoter.io, which is valued at we think roughly about one hundred and seventy-three dollars for that three months. And we're going to talk more about why Vid thinks Promoter.io is important and how it can fit into the referral part of your business. So stick around for details on how you can enter that competition a little bit later on. Okay, Vid, before we start talking about all things WordPress and geeking off over uh, hosting, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, A fighter pilot. Oh, really? Yeah, my dad was uh, in the Indian Air Force. Uh, He fought against Pakistan and... uh, uh, he had some uh, military equipment at the house, and we used to go to the officers' club. So him and his buddies were all pilots, so I wanted to be like him. Cool. Have you ever flown a plane? Yes, but not a jet. Right. A Cessna. Ah, so you got a civilian pilot's license? No, that's also a very interesting story, actually. Um, my first flying lesson was on September 10th, 2001. Oh, really? That was in New Jer- it was in New Jersey. It was out of Princeton Airport, out, out of Copper Airport, actually. And uh, they gave me my money back. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so I had perfect you- timing. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll try again in a couple of years. Right. And so you've, your feet have been on the ground since, right? Well, yeah. Wow. As long as I can. Wow. That's, wow. What a, I mean, that, that's like some kind of... You know, wow, man, whatever your belief system is, that is like the universe telling you in no uncertain terms that maybe now is not a good time to be, uh, to be uh, investigating this path. Yeah, what's crazy is that uh, my brother and I used to go into World Trade Center every morning in New York um, and we overslept that day. Are you serious? No. Wow. I mean, yes, I am serious. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. So you used to work in the... You used to go into the World Trade Center every day, and on September yeah. 11, you overslept. Yeah, I, I used to work on 55 Water Street, uh, which is the Chase Bank building right by Wall Street, and my brother worked on Wall Street, and we used to take the train. Wow. That's, yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's remarkable. I've Wow, that, I'm completely speechless now. You've just thrown me off the entire script and I just need a moment to compose myself. <laughs> wow, that is that is remarkable. How how does it how do you, how did you feel like going back and visiting the site of the World Trade Center after September 11? I haven't yet. I don't want to. Wow. That is that is truly remarkable. Wow. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Um when did you discover the web? At what point did you decide, okay, well, I'm not going to become a fighter pilot. I'm going to hang out on the internet instead. So uh, the, the two things didn't happen at the same time. Uh, I discovered the web or I would say gopher, I, probably before the web uh-huh. uh, in 1992, 1991. Um, I actually remember pirating Netscape. Um, and uh, so way before the web, way before people were – any um, GUI browser was available. Right. Mark Andreessen would be happy, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's hurting. I mean, his fund, I think, yeah. they need some money from us. Yes, that's right. That one pirated copy of Netscape was his undoing. Um, yeah. and, and so at what point did you, did you think, okay, there's something in this technology and I think there's an opportunity here to build a business or make a career out of being online? Um. So that happened right around when I graduated high school in 1996. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody, it was the start of the dot-com boom and and living in New Jersey, um, having friends in New York. It was pretty much if you could type, you got a job. Wow. It's kind of like that today in San Francisco. And uh, (laughs) we, that's what happened. Uh, But um, so after my dad left the Air Force, he actually got into computers. So I followed his footsteps again and I started getting into computers and by the time I graduated high school, I already knew how to program. Um, I learned to program in Pascal, um, which nobody uses, but I knew the basics of programming, and I had already started picking up uh, web and systems administration stuff. Wow, cool. And I'm sure all of our friends in San Francisco, we mean that with all due respect. We know that you can do more than type, but uh, I, <laughs> you get yeah, the point. Yeah, they can type really fast. That's right. 
<laughs> with headphones on, listening to uh, emo music at the same time. It's a real skill. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you remember the first time you saw the WordPress dashboard? Um, yes, and, yes and no. First time I heard about WordPress, first time I actually ran into WordPress was probably 2000, late 2001. Uh-huh. Um, and then the first time I saw the WordPress dashboard myself was... Uh, in 2000 and early, late 2002. Okay. And were you, what were you using it for at that point? Were you using it to blog or? So I've been a system, system administrator slash guy who runs hosting companies or works for a hosting company for almost all my life. And uh, first, first interaction with WordPress was actually with B2 mm-hmm. um, and how people were trying to install it and it would crash. So I remember like, okay, this is getting popular. This is when PHP Nuke and uh, Post Nuke and all these other things were still out there. Mm. So everybody was trying out their own content management system and we were, I had to support them. I had to make sure the servers weren't crashing or the sites weren't getting hacked or they weren't doing something stupid. So that was the first time I ran into it. Um, And then when I wanted to start blogging again, I tried out WordPress or yeah, the WordPress with the B2 theme. And actually, first time around, I actually ended up with something called Serendipity, um, S9Y. It's, it's still running, um, S9Y.org. It's, it was a piece of software that competed with WordPress back then. And uh, I don't know, I liked it back then more than WordPress. So so from a hosting point of view, you, you, you were kind of seeing, um, I've just pulled up S9Y.org actually, Serendipity, PHP-powered, flexible blogging CMS application. Um, from a hosting point of view, you're a provider and you are seeing more and more of your customers trying to install B2, which became WordPress. So right from early on, right from like before WordPress was WordPress, you were seeing this kind of shift towards this particular technology that was becoming popular. Yeah, the, the idea of content management systems, blogging and the whole user-generated content because um, if you remember, uh, and again, I'm probably aging myself on how long I've been on the internet. Um, Slashdot, when it first came out, um, I have a four-digit user ID on that. Um, when it first came out, uh, when they released their source code, everybody tried to make a clone of it, just like they tried to do with a dig. Um, and there were so many different platforms out there. Uh, so people were just trying to be the next Slashdot, and they would get an account on hosting companies like us and try to put something up. So we saw all kinds of software. And after 2003, we saw more WordPress and serendipity than anything else. I want to talk more about hosting and um, a little bit later on in the interview, because it's one thing that I think requires a very special kind of mindset to to battle on when all logic will tell you to just give up and quit because it's too hard. But I want to talk more about that a little bit later on. But before we get there, how do you describe what you do in one sentence? So talking about Pressable nowadays, when someone meets you for the first time and they say, hey, Vid, what do you do? What's your elevator pitch, so to speak? Um, So for that, it's basically depending on who you talk to, obviously. Um, If they're in the community, uh, we we are a managed WordPress hosting company for businesses. Um, and, uh, for people who don't know anything about me or the industry or the community, I do computers. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because the minute you say you're involved in the web, of course, everyone says, oh, I need a website. (laughs) Yeah. And with hosting also, you say you do hosting and then they're like, oh, well, I have this Joomla site or can you help me with my server or my printer? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I can't help you get your iPhone to talk to your new Mac on Yosemite either. That's not my area of expertise. Um, so what do you spend, what does Vid Luther actually spend most of his time doing day to day? Are you in code? Are you doing sysadmin? Are you hiring resource management, raising funds? What are you doing? So, yes. <laughs> um, so we had a, we had a pretty interesting uh, start and middle of the company, I guess, and that's where we are right now. So um, right now I'm doing, I'm, I'm wearing multiple hats and part of them is basically learning the business. I call this my uh, extremely expensive in terms of hair loss uh, <laughs> MBA. Yeah. And 
I'm learning how to, I'm learning the business side of things because the technical side of things comes by pretty easily for me. Uh-huh. And uh, what I've learned is that I, I need I need to understand business better. So I'm learning both. And have you managed to get the technical stuff off your desk and you now have staff doing that? Not yet, because um, honestly, we uh, we had we had some trouble this year uh, with with the company. We had uh, we had to scale back quite a bit and uh, kind of like go back to the drawing board. So right now, I'm looking at the technology again and I'm redoing that. And at the same time, I am uh, looking for somebody who can help me run the business. Wow, cool. So I'm completely oblivious to what might have happened in the last twelve months at Pressable. What, what was is it? What, did you just grow too fast, or what was the what was the main speed hump? Um, I think the f- the biggest thing was um, we. So this is a, like I was really excited to come on the podcast for this uh, because most people just talk about how awesome it is to just start a business, mm. and I think I'm in a stage where it's like. When shit hits the fan, what do you do? And yeah. what happens and how, how does it feel? Mm. So what happened to us was um, everybody and their mother saw that they could get into managed WordPress hosting business. Mm-hmm. They got into it. And uh, everybody and their mother is much better at marketing than we are. <laughs> and uh, so basically, we, we got our asses handed to us from a marketing and messaging standpoint. And we also did not address it fast enough because my you know how nerds usually go like hey the technology is better it'll it'll do it'll be fine and everything mm. we didn't really address that properly and we didn't really convey that mm. so we got the wrong type of customers we did some improper use of funds in the sense that we spent money doing things that that weren't revenue gener- generating but mm-hmm. perfecting the code mm-hmm. which doesn't really generate revenue <laughs> Uh, so just learned some interesting things that way mm. and learned a lot of things, a lot of things about our customers and why they like us, why they, why some of them left. And, uh, out of that, it came, what came out was what do we want out of a customer and who do we want to cater to? So I would say the first six months of 2014 were me getting punched in the face almost every day. <laughs> Wow, man. Uh, and uh, now I'm starting to punch back. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you didn't stay down for too long. Hey, I actually almost sold the company twice. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be saying things that not, not a lot of people know about yet. Awesome. Well, there you go. We're, we're having a, a scoop here on the WP Elevation podcast. This is exciting. Um, let's let's talk a little bit. I just want to get to know you a little bit more before we talk about um, Pressable. Um, this might be a stupid question now that you've told me what you've just told me. What's the one thing that keeps you awake at night? My baby. <laughs> nice. How old? Uh, 14, she'll be 14 months on Thursday. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Yoast or Vlad from Manage WP when I asked them that question. I, no, I said, what do you do when you're not working? And they said, you don't have kids, do you? And I went, no, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, like when you ask, like, what's the thing you do after, like, when you're when you're not working? It's like I spend time with my baby and my wife. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, are you good at switching off, or are you like most entrepreneurs, where you know? I you're... worked on my honeymoon. Sorry, say that again. I worked on my honeymoon. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and and it's my personality. My wife actually says uh, I'm the type of guy that if I work ten hours a day, it's a vacation for me. Right. So. It's... Working less as vacation. How, how do you, um, are you worried about burning out at some point? Um, yes and no. Um, I was worried about burning out for a couple of months. And, um, and then I realized that the reason why I was burning out was because I wasn't doing something fun. And I was trying to, I was trying to basically build a company and build a hosting company that was completely opposite what I had initially started out for. I wanted to change the hosting game, and uh, uh, I started playing everybody else's game. So we're changing that again, and I'm doing it my, on my terms, and I don't think I'll burn out. Mm. Awesome. Uh, 
If you could wave a magic wand and fix one thing in the business right now, what would it be? Um, changing expectations and giving customers realistic expectations and making them realize how important their website is and uh, they should not uh, they shouldn't be so stupid about how, how they go about hosting their website and who they choose for their host. Mm. So educated, so a more educated customer, yeah? Yeah. I can. Mm. Or more, uh, I wouldn't say educated. Like, I think it's more of a, a more of a purposeful customer. Yeah. I, guess, yeah. I, I don't know. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do you find, do you find a lot of, um, I mean, <clears throat> I think I know where you're coming from. One of the interesting statistics that Matt Mullenweg talks about with WordPress.com is that something like 96% of new blogs get abandoned within seven days. Uh, yeah. Do you find that a lot of clients open an account, install WordPress with all this kind of energy and enthusiasm and then abort mission pretty quickly? Yeah, uh, that, that was actually one of the deciding factors in us changing our name. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, people get have a heated conversation or they have these ideas when they're drunk and they go, oh, we can get a domain name, start a website, and four months later, like, shit, nothing's happening. I want to cancel my account. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's plagued the hosting industry forever. Yeah. So let's talk about... Um, Pressable and where it came from. You started out as Zippy Kid, right? Yes, sir. And I remember uh, Zippy Kid actually when I, f I think I first discovered Pagely, and I think it might have even been before I've discovered WP Engine. I discovered Pagely and Zippy Kid were kind of like the two options for me. And at the time, I thought Zippy Kid was a great name because for me it was just like, well, this is going to be super fast. It's just going to be really fast WordPress hosting. So. At, at what point, so tell us what happened with Zippy Kid and why you rebranded to Pressable. So Zippy Kid was basically a, everybody says the same thing. It's a great name. It's easy to remember. It's a great brand. It obviously says fast. Um, and uh, it was my little jab at GoDaddy because uh, we used to call them Slow Daddy. <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a really awesome name and still is, but the, the type of customer that it brought over uh, when people saw the word Zippy Kid were the guys that were just like, oh, I can just start something and then leave it four months from now or one month from now. Or, we, I mean, we would get customers like who would forget that they had signed up and um, want a refund six months later. And we did not want to cater to those customers because... Um, they didn't agree with our – most of the people that we have hired so far, they all agree with my philosophy that your website is your receptionist. It is the front door to your business. And if you don't have a business, uh, we probably aren't the best company for you. And I'd be, I'd be as bold to say that unless you're making $50,000 or more off your business, you probably don't want to host with us. And so that that was that that kind of prompted the rebranding and getting rid of the Zippy Kid name and the Zippy Kid branding and moving towards Pressable to try and attract a higher caliber of customer. Yeah, we wanted to get away from the hey, this is a thing for kids. This is a uh, I mean, we still get people. Uh, we would go, oh, uh, are you a daycare? Uh, we hired a, a girl to work with us. Uh, a couple of years ago, and when she told her family that she was going to work for Zippy Kid, they said, "Oh, great! Now you can have daycare for your child." And she said, "No, there's nothing like that." Um, and uh, so it was basically, "Hey, we're going after the bigger customers. We're going after the bigger market." And again, people with a little bit more purpose—people who have gone past the GoDaddies and Bluehosts of the world—and they have. They know what the problems are. They understand what they want to do. They want to. I've always said, like, focus on your content, not your content management system. Mm -hmm. um, the like, focus on your business. Like, you know how, like, if you join EO or any of those chairman or CEO groups, they always say work on out of your business, not on it mm. or not in it. Mm. Um, 
I wanted those guys, people who would let us do what we needed to do. And they would just go, hey, did we make, did we post three times a week or not? Not my WordPress website is uh, loading in 1.4 seconds and it should be loading in 1.3 seconds. Mm. Because they're just measuring the wrong things. Mm. So how do you, how do you, I mean, this is, you know, this is the obvious question. How do you differentiate yourself from SiteGround, WP Engine, Pagely, any of the other, you know, even the Bluehost managed WordPress hosting package, any of those managed WordPress hosting, and yes, I'm doing air quotes, uh, services, how do you stand apart from them and say, well, what we've got is a different offering other than just talking about quality, service, and price? Um, so I would say right now we don't. We do a really bad job of it, um, <laughs> but stay tuned. Uh, we have something coming that uh, will really sep- uh, separate us. And like, I think the first six months, with, like me getting punched in the face was just me answering or trying to answer that question, what's the difference between you and Paisley or WP Engine or Joe's managed WordPress hosting.com. Mm. Um, and um, so we have something, we have uh, quite a few things coming up that will address that. So make I, it clear. So I think you, I mean, I really appreciate your honesty, but I also think you're giving yourself a bit of a hard time because um, I, I, the, the, when I look at the, when I look at the uh, agencies and developers page on the Pressable website, there's this really nice flow chart that encourages me to join that says create a new WordPress website, invite collaborators and build websites without sharing passwords, which I want to ask you about in a minute, build what you want on your dedicated staging site and deploy when ready, and then host client sites with pricing from $5 a site. Talk to me about the invite and build part of the your model. Okay, so um, that idea came about because having been in the hosting industry forever, and having seen people uh, send their passwords to their sister's son who builds websites and that person then hacking their web- website or doing something, I-, I wanted to change that system. I, mean, I wanted it so that uh, we could, like, I- there were two things we were trying to solve. One, the account owner, the business owner should be able to share, like, let somebody else work on the website without a problem. Two, I didn't want them sharing their own credentials with these people. Um, one of the things I, that I did in 2009 was actually helped uh, Robert Scoble move over from WordPress.com to Rackspace. Nice. And uh, I, I still give him shit for it because uh, he gave me his password. <laughs> and his password was the same across every single service, including <laughs> Google, GoDaddy, Rackspace, and everything. And uh, I, I was just like, wait, how many people have you given this to? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I really wanted uh, that process to change. And then as a, as a consultant to other agencies in, in the past, every now and then I would hear from them, they, they would say, hey, uh, we hired this contractor uh, or this developer is going away. How do we lock him out of our systems? How do we lock him out of our websites? Mm-hmm. And... Uh, before, they didn't really have a good way of doing it. So I looked at different solutions out there, what was the easiest one, and uh, actually GitHub does a really good job of it. And I tried to take what GitHub did, but make it a little bit simpler, because our audience, uh, not everybody is familiar with GitHub, and uh, especially when you're the C-level person at a business and you're hiring an agency, you don't know that whole model of collaboration. Mm. The, the terminology that they use is different than what we use. So we just say, hey, like, so when you add a website on our system, we just say, are you working with a developer on this website? And if you say yes, and we say, okay, give, the, give us your, the, the developer's email address, and that's it. Okay. We don't have to do anything else extra for them. Right. Um, and developers can tell their customers, hey, just when you go sign up for Pressable, put this information in, and we'll, we'll, they'll get the information. So right. do that. Nice. So you're actually facilitating the developer and the client, giving them an, a, an environment where they can collaborate on the site so that the client can start putting their content in and the developer can keep developing that on the staging site so that uh, while they're developing it and the client's putting the content, hopefully by the time they've finished their collective jobs, the site's ready to then deploy. If that is, if the developer is that good, yes. Most of the times, 
it's, it's, it's hard to find um, a freelancer that is capable of coordinating that well with a client. <laughs> um, just because they don't have time and a lot of freelancers, just, they just say yes to almost anything and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think they give business owners a bad name. Yes. They, they, give, they, give, they give business owners a bad experience, which in turn makes other freelancers and WordPress work people. Uh, I think we, we're, we, we risk becoming the mechanics of the world where people yeah. are just, are we being taken, to, uh, taken for a ride? Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, of, of course, except those freelancers who are in WP Elevation because they know better. Exactly. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, so talk to me about the, so you guys raised some funding with, um, with an angel list here. I was watching an interview uh, with you earlier today on YouTube with the, the girl from Cloudflare at a, um, at, a, at a conference. You raised some funding on an angel list with some of the guys from Rackspace. What has that meant to the business? Like, has that just, has that just, has that just put you under a whole bunch of pressure and kind of raised your own expectations as to how you want to perform now? Um. I think the the fact that it came from people from Rackspace and even Automatic put some money in, um, uh, that it, no, I don't think that added any more pressure than what I had already done to myself. Uh, and it's it's purely from a uh, like you said, you think I'm being hard on myself. I'm just being honest. I I don't like to do anything unless I'm going to do it right. Mm. And if I don't do it right, I will say I didn't do it right. But that doesn't mean like. I'm beating myself up. I'm just being honest. Yeah, I don't go. I don't go crying at night or anything. So right. the pressure was wasn't there. The pressure, the, the investment money, actually was more of a way for me to get more connections uh -huh. and to give us a little, like the the money from Rackspace uh, or from the founders of Rackspace gave us more insight and more insider uh, access to some of Rackspace's bigger customers who Rackspace wasn't or isn't serving yet. Mm. And was that? Did that funding come with some kind of mentoring or some business advice, or was it just, "Hey, here's some cash, all the best"? No, it it, it came with uh, quite a bit of mentoring and advice, and I can still go to them anytime I feel like. I mean, I, I live in San Antonio. The the guys that put money in live in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I can go have beers with them. I can email them. Um, uh, one of the guys was actually here earlier today. And has that been, for those that are, you know, <clears throat> I know there's this, there's kind of two schools of thought. There are people that are big fans of bootstrapping and there are people that are big fan of, of raising funding to, you know, to scale growth and to speed things up. In your experience, if you had your time again, what would you advise newcomers? Would you say, look, go after some funding if you can, or would you advise them to try and bootstrap it? It really depends on what you want to do with the business and how fast you want to grow and, uh, and what your strengths are. So for me, uh, I wanted to grow the business really fast and I deluded myself into thinking that I was an awesome marketer <laughs> because by myself, I was making close to $10,000 a month, uh, before I took on any funding. Mm. And as a single, as, as a, double income, no kid family, mm. we were doing really well. Um, so I thought, oh, I could scale this and uh, didn't turn out that way. But the, um, I think you have to, based on what you want to do with the business and your goals and what you're good at, you should raise money with a specific plan and a specific uh, person in mind. That's, this, is, this, this person's going to help me grow the company. Um, and you have to raise money for growth. If you raise money for development or research, you are screwed. Mm. It's, it's, it's a bad idea to just or say, give me $600,000 or give me a million dollars and I'm going to go build on the next uh, pressable pillar. No one's going to do that. Mm. And I think you make an important distinction there, knowing because a lot of people think that raising money is going to answer all their prayers. But I've had this conversation with several entrepreneurs on the podcast where I say, what do you, how do you know what to spend the money on? And most of them say, well, the thing is you don't. And you, you generally start off spending the money on things that aren't right for the business and you learn over time, okay, let's not do that again. Uh, let's spend money on things that are actually going to help us grow and raise revenue and you know, not, um, not develop 
awesome code that nobody really cares about at this stage in the business. What we need to do is scale and get more customers in the front in the front door. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the difference between. Uh, uh, I think you were being nice, and when you when you were asking about it, but like smart money and dumb money. Yeah. Um, like the dumb money is no better than uh, you winning the lottery. Mm. Uh, you'll lose it just as fast. And smart money is like the guys from Rackspace. If I'm in the hosting business, who else better to go talk to than somebody who started and ran a billion dollar hosting company? Mm. They have all the connections in the world. I mean, because of that, uh, we got connected with the CTO for the Obama administration wow. uh, or for the campaign for re-election of Obama. Um, we, we got some really big customers uh, out of Rackspace uh, because... Rackspace, while they do manage hosting, they don't do managed WordPress hosting. Yeah. And we were able to get four or five figure customers from that. How do you handle support? What do you mean? Well, how do you handle the, I imagine that being a hosting company, that the sheer volume of support tickets would be enough just to drive anyone over the edge. How do you, <laughs> how do you manage that workflow? Uh, so you hire people who are service oriented, uh, and you also make it so that the customers can fix their problems as easily as possible. And when a ticket does come in, you can give your, your support guys tools that can fix the problem faster than them having to spend a lot of time. Um, there is no silver bullet because every now and then things will break in a way that you, your support can't scale. Mm. Um, there's nothing you can do to prepare for it, but otherwise just hire people with the right attitude and know that people will ask questions and some of them are going to be really stupid. Mm. <laughs> it's, I love your candor and honesty. We, I used to host websites way back years ago and I got out of it pretty quickly because I realized I was really bad at it. Um, <clears throat> but I want to talk, smart. yeah, yeah. Thank you. I want to talk about your mindset because hosting I mean, building a website is troubleshooting, right? Building a website is, is one level of troubleshooting, but hosting is just a whole other world of potential pain. And, and building a company around hosting, how, how have you not just quit? Like, I know you said you almost sold the company twice this year, but how, how, have you, like, how are you still there doing it? Like, how, what is the mindset you think that most people would just chuck it in because it gets too hard? Why, have it, why aren't you one of those people? Um... So once was because I didn't get enough money to quit. <laughs> and the second was uh, uh, the, the, I think the core reason is I, 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 I innately want to solve this problem. And I don't see anybody else who is beating the drum louder than us doing solving this problem. They're... they're None of the companies out there right now are doing anything different than being a niche host that sucks, but sucks less than a generic host. <laughs> um, the, so the bar is fairly low right now, um, and I, I still think that the problem can be fixed. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm thinking 10 years down the road uh, when the way we consume content is very different, when WordPress itself is very different. Like... I don't think it'll look anything like the way it does right now, mm. but the need for a content manager system is always going to be there mm. and businesses are going to need a way to do this. And I want to watch how this happens. I want to be part of the industry that does it. Mm. And uh, I knew that even if I sold or even if I quit, I would just end up somehow coming back into the hosting industry. And, and trust And if you look at my past, uh, I have always ended up becoming part of a hosting company somehow it just happened to be mm. I like the way you said that, that you know you just want to solve this problem and that's what keeps you motivated and what keeps you trying to find solutions yeah I, I still think like that I, I when when you look at things like okay so if I was to sell it what would I do next and every time I would think of that I would end up with like I would end up stupidly starting another company that would do something similar. Um, obviously, make sure the lawyers don't sue me for non-compete and everything, but uh, it would be, I think the problem of helping a business owner, helping an entrepreneur 
um, actually run his business, that part in a weird way is really sexy to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that people spend too much time figuring out how to get their message across to the web and to their audience. And I feel like as, as a programmer, as a nerd, we are failing the, the muggles. And uh, I, I just want to solve it. Mm. Um, uh, you, you, ha you, had, uh, you, told, you mentioned something before, which I've completely forgotten. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Promoter.io. <clears throat> you mentioned off camera that you think that referrals and, and, and net promoter score is a, a, a great way to actually grow the business. Why do you think, first of all, explain for those that don't understand net promoter score. Tell me, tell me about that. So Net Promoter Score is basically a concept that was pioneered, I don't know, probably 10, 15 years ago, um, where um, you measure the success of your business and your service, not based on just like um, what people are saying about you on, in the press, but what are your customers saying? Are your customers talking about you? Are they recommending you to their friends and family? And are they doing it? not just because you have an affiliate program or mm. you're going to get some money out of it, but because they actually think that you are better than somebody else. And uh, so Net Promoter Score is basically, they, they, they devise a system that basically you send one question to a, your customer saying, would you recommend us to somebody, yes or no? And whatever the answer is, for all the people that say yes, you contact them and go, well, how can we help you promote ourselves to your friends and family? And for the ones that say no, and like the, but the bottom three and the top three, you contact them immediately and you try to figure out like what sucked about us and what was so awesome. And if you want to grow um, and you want to figure out like what your elevator pitch is, uh, talk to the guys that are giving you the tens and the yeses and say like, why did you pick us? Why do you stay with us? And you will find your elevator pitch that way. You will fi figure out what it is that you're doing right. And you'll figure out what it is that you're doing wrong. Either you, the guys that say no, they may not be the right customer for you. Mm. But if you talk to them, you may find out what was, on, what was it that your website or your demeanor made them think that you were right for them. And that allows you to fix that problem. I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes under the video, netpromoter.com slash whynetpromoter slash no, K-N-O-W, which explains the Net Promoter system, which is fantastic, and it's very similar to what you just said. In fact, it is exactly the same. So talk to me about promoter.io. Why is promoter.io, the website says, the easiest and most effective way to capture actionable customer feedback? And this is a, uh, this is, uh, is this started by the, the guys from Rackspace, is that right? It started from, uh, so Rackspace is using this, this system right now. The guy that started the company used to run it for Rackspace. Mm -hmm. He left Rackspace and went to HP, and then he went from HP to um, a company called AppFog or PHP Fog. And he ran the program over there. And at all these places, he basically figured out all the other systems out there that help you run promoter scores are really not designed for a more tech savvy and a they just have really shitty interfaces. They have really odd ways of doing things, and they don't really teach you what to do past the question. Like people, a lot of people will just go, "Oh, well, we got a, we got eighty-five percent saying yes, they would recommend us," and then nothing after that. Uh, like, and uh, Chad, who started the company, basically, he's really passionate about this. He wants to educate people on a okay, case. So. Here's what you do when you find out and why you should be running these questions every month. Um, and if you have 10,000 customers, you can break your list down and do it. You can do it over three months and do uh, 3,000 at a time. But the training part of what do you do afterwards mm. is what Promoter IO gives. And they make the system really easy because you can track. Uh, in, the, in the dashboard, we can track people by of all the people who are saying that they love us, how much are they paying us? And all, all the people that are saying they hate us, how much are they paying us? Mm. And from a business standpoint, you can look at which ones are the most profitable. How many tickets are they creating? You can, we can build those systems in there and then actually get a better insight into the guys that hate you. Are they really the right people uh, for you? 
because everybody knows Twitter is really uneven when it comes to uh, judging sentiment about a company. Uh, there are some idiots out there who will just tweet for every single thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you just judge things based on that, you're screwed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you shouldn't make business decisions based on that. No, that's right. That's right. That's the takeaway from this interview, people. Don't make business decisions based on what you see on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Okay, we should do our – thank you for explaining the Net Promoter Score. Um, the competition, by the way, uh, I'll announce the details in just a moment on how to enter that, but Vid is sponsoring three months of the starter plan, I'm assuming, on promoter.io? Yep. Cool. So stick around for details in a moment on how you can enter that, and I'll give you those details. Uh, in the meantime, we should do the elevation round very quickly. You've been around consulting, and you host consultants' websites, and you've got a lot of experience and knowledge in the consulting business. So WP Elevation, for those that don't know, if you've been living under a rock for the last 16 months, is a business accelerator program to teach WordPress consultants how to run a successful and profitable business. So in this round, I'm going to ask Vid a series of quick questions, and you're just going to give us some quick answers off the top of your head. All right, what's the number one thing any freelancer or consultant needs to know? I think they need to know that if they say no to a project, that they won't starve. Um, I like it. They need, to, they need to know their strengths and weaknesses, and they need to understand that if they keep saying yes to everything, they're going to end up giving a really shitty experience, and that will make it so that people don't recommend them anymore. I like that a lot. Um, uh, question two is, what's the best thing you've ever done to find new customers? Uh, I would say put up a website that said, sign up here. <laughs> that I mean, we've grown purely through word of mouth so far. And it was really just putting up a website and it's been pretty awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Um, uh, you know, and it's it's actually funny you say that because... I don't know how many websites I see where the call to action is really ambiguous and not obvious at all. And just having a very simple website with a very simple offering and a very simple button to sign up now, you know, can, I think we overcomplicate things a lot. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you stop competing on price? Um, you educate the market and you educate, like, I think you... you there, there, there will always be certain segments of any product that will compete on price. Mm -hmm. And if you like doing that, you should do that. I mean, for all uh, jokes aside, like I'm Indian. We love to haggle, right? My mom loves to haggle. It, and I, you take me anywhere, I will haggle on price. Um, but I'll do that for certain goods, not for my hosting, not for my food. And... You have to just know, like, okay, go find the right customer. Go find the customer with a purpose. Yeah, that's right. Find, yeah, that's gold, find the right customer. Um, because, the, you know, what most freelancers don't understand is that not every customer is right for you. In fact, um, most customers will probably not be, if you're building websites for customers, a lot of customers just won't be profitable. You'll end up building this website, managing their, managing their expectations because, as you said before, you say yes to everything because you want the gig. And then you end up four weeks or five weeks or six weeks down the track and you realize that you're just not making any profit out of this job because it's dragging on because the client is just not a good fit. Any tips on writing better proposals? Um, I would say um, that because nobody will take the first advice of say no to things, once you, are, once you do find yourself uh, uh, flooded with uh, contracts, Start thinking about what are the things that you, you're enjoying, which, what are the projects that you enjoy doing and the ones you, get, you finish first, mm -hmm. and start going after those things, and your proposal will automatically get better. And your proposal should be more about how much money the customer can save or make, not about how technically, not how much technically sound your implementation is going to be. Because if the customer understood that, they would be doing it themselves. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, that is so well put. That is a, that's a tweetable uh, extract from the interview right there. Um, any tips? Oh, I've already said that. Okay, favorite tool or system for CRM? Um, right now, a phone and an email. 
Yep, excellent. Uh, but uh, I mean, again, like I said, I'm learning the MBA part and learning the forecasting and all of that. So ask me again in six months. <laughs> I will do. Uh, uh, what's the best way to keep a project and a client on track? Communicate. Yeah. Just talk to them. Yep. Um, no, uh, no secrets there. And any ideas? Well, I think we've covered this. Any ideas for getting referrals? Ask them. <laughs> Ask them only if they love you, right? <laughs> yeah, especially now that you know who loves you. That's right. Ask them. Don't ask the bottom three for referrals. It might not work out. Uh, and final question in the elevation round. What's the number one thing you can do to differentiate yourself? Um, so that's a two-part answer for me. Um, one is just do something different than everybody else in the industry. And depending on what the industry is, it could be something as simple as writing thank you notes or having a concierge service. Um, and the second is depending on uh, if you're actually in, in this thing to solve a problem and you're, you're trying to actually give a shit about your customers and not just their money, um, usually the customer will tell you what's bothering them. And if you can solve it or make it go away just a slight bit, and I'm not saying like, oh, go kill their husband or their wife, but <laughs> example would be one of our customers, um, uh, they, when they came on board with us, their firewall within their IT, their, their multinational organization, their fire, the IT department wouldn't allow them to SFTP outside of their network. So there were two women in this company who had to basically walk across campus, go to the Starbucks, and uh, work from there to build their website. And it was a pain in the ass. And when I found out about it, I just sent them $200 gift cards at Starbucks. And they, like, before that, they were blaming us on conference calls saying, like, why, do, why don't we allow FTP? Why are we only doing SFTP and things like that? We were like, your IT department is wrong when they say that SFTP is not secure and FTP is secure. Uh, they, so, but long story short, once they got the gift cards, they were like, oh, we love you guys. Uh, and now we, we, we can go to Starbucks and work. We can't wait to go, go to work now. That's yeah. awesome. I love that story, man. That's a great story. Uh, thank you for uh, helping us out with the Elevation Round. What's the future for Pressable? Where do you, where do you see Pressable being in, you know, even six months' time from now? I mean, it sounds like you've had a pretty rough start to 2014. You've turned a corner. You're punching back. Where are you going to be by sort of March, April 2015? Uh Basically, I think we're going to be leading a new segment within the uh, WordPress hosting and WordPress publishing market. Um, and uh, it's going to be, I, I think what, what I have planned and what we're, what we're working out is going to really separate us from all the other hosting companies out there and truly uh, explain my vision for what we want to do. Um, and uh, I think we're going to be in a much better position if everybody agrees with my vision <laughs> and my ideas are right. Um, and uh, so far, every, everybody I've talked to has been like, yeah, we don't understand why none of the other hosting companies do this yet. Um, I think uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be paving the way again, as we did in the, in the beginning, for what a hosting company should be doing. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing how all that unfolds. Um, okay, competition announcement details, as I promised. Uh, Vid is giving away three months of the starter plan at promoter.io, which is going to give you some great insight into whether your customers will recommend you, and if not, why not, uh, which we've spoken about. So in order to enter this competition, Vid is curious to know where WordPress developers or WordPress theme integrators or WordPress consultants, whatever we call ourselves, where we are learning best practices for coding. So where are we learning our development best practices? So just put a link underneath this video and tell us your go-to place for learning best practices for being a WordPress developer or coder or theme integrator, customizer, whatever it is you do, and I'll get, and tell us why you recommend that place. Tell us why you go there to get your information and your knowledge and your training. I'll get Vid to swing by in a couple of weeks and award the prize. Sound good, Vid? Sounds awesome. Awesome. All right, um, just to wrap up, what is the number one piece of advice you would give any entrepreneur trying to build their own business? 
Um, start. Mm. Uh, don't don't ever think that somebody else is going to do it better than you. <laughs> and uh, always know that even though you think somebody is more educated or more experienced, they are just as scared. And uh, just start. There's like you're gonna. It's better to fail at something than succeed at nothing. Yeah, <clears throat> that's absolutely right. <laughs> uh, what is I think it's Tony Robbins says: take imperfect action. I love that quote. Yeah, yeah I think it's a variation of patterns. But in a small. I'd rather execute a plan, imperfect plan, than not execute a perfect. Perfect plan. plan yeah. Uh, where can people reach out and say thanks and connect with you, Vid? So for me directly, uh, just at Vid Luther on Twitter, uh, Vid at Pressable dot com, or uh, just our website. Um, and uh, for the company, Pressable dot com or at Pressable on Twitter. Beautiful. And um, finally, who would you like me to interview on this uh, podcast and why? Um, so I would love it, it. I mean, there are multiple people I can think of. Um, how, how about uh, Hugh McLeod, Gaping Void? From? From Gaping Void, Hugh McLeod. Okay. I'm not familiar with what's what's Hugh's company game, uh, Gaping Void, G A P I N G V O I D. Gaping Void, okay. Yeah. He does. Uh, he writes uh, doodles on the back of business cards. Ah, gotcha. He's got quite a following on. Uh, All right. I'm not familiar with Hugh, but I will be. Hugh McLeod, courtesy of Vid Luther. I'm coming to get you, so keep your eyes on your inbox for an invitation to get on the podcast soon. Hey, thank you for recommending uh, Hugh. I will be sure to chase him up, and when we do get that interview, I'll send you a link so you can uh, have a look at it. Sounds good. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for spending almost an hour of your time with us on the WP Elevation podcast. I really appreciate it, and I wish you all the best for the future of Pressable and look forward to seeing how your motivation and enthusiasm manifests over the next six months. Thank you. Me too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Well, I seriously hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed interviewing Vid. It was truly remarkable. I learned a lot about the man and a lot about the hosting business and a lot about Pressable. Of course, this episode was brought to you by Video User Manuals. You can find out more at wpelevation.com slash VUM. Uh, just grab the plugin for a dollar for your first month and start using it to teach all of your clients how to use WordPress, how to use the SEO by Yoast plugin, and how to use WooCommerce, and how to use Google Analytics. It truly is a fabulous thing. Um, subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode at wpelevation.com slash subscribe and you'll probably get some free stuff when you subscribe. You'll get either a free ebook or a free checklist or a free webinar or something, I'm sure of it. Um, all the show notes for this episode will be at wpelevation.com slash vidluther, V-I-D-L-U-T-H-E-R. And remember, leave your comments underneath this video and tell Vid your number one go-to place for learning coding best practices and why it is your favorite resource. And you could win uh, three months of promoter.io so you can start polling your audience and find out what they really think of you. Um, also, you'll find more information on the free trial and a link to the free trial uh, for Pressable if you visit the show notes at wpelevation.com slash vidluther. Next week on the podcast, I will be interviewing Ed Dale, one of my mentors, and in fact, I can categorically say the man that is responsible for me having my own podcast and the man that is responsible for me focusing on my business and actually building WP Elevation in the first place. So I'm super, super chuffed to have Ed on the podcast. For those of you that don't know, he's the man behind the 30-day challenge. He's Australia, probably Australia's most well-known and most successful online marketer. And I look forward to bringing Ed's knowledge and personality and character to you on the podcast. So stick around for that. Hey, give us some five-star reviews on iTunes if you like what we're doing. Uh, check us out on Stitcher Radio. And of course, join WP Elevation and build your WordPress consulting business uh, make it profitable, make it successful, just like everyone else in the program. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, go Elevate.